Okay. Hello and welcome to the public public input meeting for the Alba City Pool or the Hatfield Aquatic Center. I am Blake Jordan, a member of the Alba Pool Citizens Advisory Committee. We would like to thank you for your interest in the community pool and for taking the time to attend today's meeting. The committee strongly believes that the input from you as community, community members is vital to moving forward of applying for funding and to make proposals to provide the best aquatic center solution for our community. I would like to introduce and call roll for the members of the committee that are here today for our first item on the agenda. Ms. Allison Pinko. Mr. Blake Jordan, I'm here. Mr. Brandon Sherman. Here. Mr. Dalton Beeler. Here. Ms. Kay Decker. Here. Ms. Kim Baugh. Here. And Mr. Paul Barton. Here. Thank you. Some housekeeping items I would like to share. First, please take a moment and silence any electronic devices. <coughs> and also, if you did not sign in, please do so before you leave. With that being said, I would like to move on to item number two on the agenda, a presentation of work up until this point. In August of 2018, the State Health Department closed the Alba Swimming Pool due to public health concerns. The pool needs repairs that primarily come from it not being level because of the foundation, of foundation sinking. This has caused problems with the guttering, filtration, and chlorine chemical systems. In January of 2019, citizens of Alba filled out surveys provided by the city. The city made a resolution calling for a 2.5 million bond issue election for Alba citizens to vote on that did not pass in August of that year. The city then put together a task force of citizens to review strategies to address the pool issues. A series of public town halls were held. An online email survey was made available for public input with over 550 responses submitted. Most citizens responded that the city should repair the pool, the pool's historic features should be preserved, be at the same location, and, all, and use all available funding options, including grants. Two independent engineering firms were hired to review, review the pool condition, Lamp Reinerson in December of 2020, and Barrett L. Williamson Architects in August of 2021. Both firms do not believe that the condition of the pool is salvageable without substantial repairs. At this time, it is not feasible to, at this time it is not feasible to attempt more patches or repairs. The problems are too extensive and the repair costs would be close to the cost of a new facility. Repairing the pool would also not guarantee a substantial lifespan. To give you an idea of the issues, I have some pictures here that were taken by the previous task forces. So starting at the bathhouse, we have minor cracking at the door lintel, cracking at interior cor corner of openings, cracking in door opening on interior wall, distress at top of column interior wall, Cracks along top of interior wall. Cracks in roof appear to allow stormwater penetration based on appearance of crack and water staining on the floor. The five inch step at the door threshold onto the pool deck is not ADA compliant. This is on the going out from the north side of the bathhouse out facing the pool. <coughs> the wedding pool is not ADA compliant. And starting at the pool basin, this is an example of deterioration observed on the pool floor. Note the moisture on the floor in the location of where the floor is cracked or delaminated. And so you can see those areas in orange here. And this is all throughout the pool. This is just one image of it. This is an image of the guttering systems. And you can see it's chipped away as well as some of the guttering system has just gone completely. Another Im image of the guttering system, where it's just missing. Joint in east wall with half inch offset across joint. This indicates significant movement in the wall system. That's in the middle here. Water staining from puddling indicates settling of the sus suspended slab roof of the, of the filter room. 
This staining corresponds with the deflected failed roof beams encountered in the filter room. So that's this big puddle area right here, and we'll see the filter rooms in just a second. This is a, an example of deck conditions. No vertical offset at crack posing tripping hazard. And then at the gazebo or the pavilion, cast concrete gazebo, note the flexural cracks in the roof beam. And so you can even see some over here, as well as the cracks over in these areas. Then in the filter room. The filters are well beyond their useful life. They are very corroded and probably do not provide adequate filtration. They are probably not watertight, even if the holes cut in them were to be welded shut. The entry to the filter room is hazardous. This is likely not OSHA compliant, so these stairs here. And this is the same if you were to go on the right side of the, of the stairs. Example of wall and ceiling conditions in the filter room. Also note the rust on the door frame. This is representative of the failed roof structure in the filter room. And then here you can also see cracks as well as holes in the ceiling, as well as you can see the uh, roof beams from far away. <coughs> now this is the pool basin. With the damaged concrete that they found marked in the dark gray areas. So these dark gray areas here is the damaged concrete that they were able to find, the engineers from before. And these black and white spots are patches that were made in the 80s or 90s that now need patches. And to be fair to the pool basin, it served us well for over 80 plus years. But during the last summer it was open, it was estimated to be lo losing about 20,000 gallons of water each day. Some of that is from evaporation. They estimate about 4,000 gallons, but that still leaves 16,000 gallons of water going missing each day. The, they first thought the water loss was due to the plumbing, but they checked the plumbing and found that it was good. And so all of that water would be going where these damaged concrete is, into the holes underneath the pool. And it is most likely a giant hole or several holes underneath. Much like what they found with the uh, pool, I believe it was over in Winoka, where you could, Moreland, in Moreland, where you could park a semi truck underneath. A little history about the pool itself. During the Great Depression, President Franklin D. Roosevelt established a number of federal agencies and a massive effort to put Americans back to work. One of these agencies included the Works Pro Progress Administration also known as the WPA. The WPA was instrumental in building public buildings, armories, swimming pools, sidewalks, and <coughs> schools across the country. In Alva, the Jesse Dunn classroom building, Shockley Hall, and numerous campus sidewalks were built by the WPA on the Northwestern campus. The old armory was built by the WPA, and the Alva swimming pool was a WPA project as well and was completed in 1939. It was one of the largest WPAs built in Oklahoma. The pool is located on land donated to the city of Alva by W.F. Hatfield and adjoins Hatfield Park. Since 1939, the Alva pool has enabled multiple generations of Alva residents the opportunity to learn to swim and has provided thousands of citizens and visitors with outdoor recreation opportunities. The pool itself has far exceeded its lifespan of safe functionality Sorry for my breathing, it's a mid my mask. The bathhouse and pavilion, though, remain functionally feasible and can be rehabilitated for future use. As a committee, we want to preserve our rich and unique history as much as we can, and this desire also comes from the previous pool surveys. So now we are working towards nominating the pool because we want to preserve our history as well as fulfilling a requirement for a federal for federal grants called a Section 106 review. In the National Historic Preservation Act of 1966, Congress established a comp comprehensive program to preserve historic properties called the 106, Section 106 Review. Because we want to apply for federal grants to help pay for the pool, we are starting the nomination process now so that we do not have to wait down the road 
and the project will not be stalled. We also hope that once on the National Register, that the pool would be able to qualify for more grants. Speaking of grants, one of the more comprehensive federal grants that we are pursuing is the Land and Water Conservation Fund grant. This is funded by the National Park Service for public outdoor recreation facilities like our swimming pool. It is a reimbursable 50-50 matching grant, which means we will need to raise the funds for the pool before we awarded the grant. But we would receive a great amount of money. The pool committee is working with a consultant that has completed the conservation grant before, and the next application is due at the end of next September, so we have a full year to prepare. Another item that the city and the pool committee has started in the past couple of weeks is the RFQ, started in the past couple of weeks is the RFQ and RFP process. RFQ stands for Request for Qualifications, and RFP stands for Request for Proposals. This is similar to sending out bids, but we are looking to hire firms to start the architecture and engineering process. I have on the slide here the public notice for the RFQ that was sent out on November 7th in the Alvarez Career. We have been able to be in contact with a few firms already, but the deadline for firms to respond is at the end of this month, November 30th. We will then choose a firm that meets the experience and qualities needed for our full project. To be able to start the RFQ RFP process, we had to make a budget for the project using the information from the previous task forces. We estimated a budget by using the cost from the previous engineering estimates from May of 2019, which is what you see on the right side of the slide here. During this time, the total cost of construction was $3.8 million. With this number, we added inflation and also a 15% increase in construction costs due to the effects of COVID-19 on materials. So with that original estimate of $3.8 million, we add to it the inflation increase in construction costs of 15%. 15% of $3.8 million is $570,000, which adds to $4,370,000. We then rounded this number up to for the budget to $4.5 million to use for the RFQ. This price is our best guess at what the cost may be. And we will not know the updated costs or designs until we send out the RFPs and get proposals from those engineering firms. So I know that was a lot of information to hear in the span of 10 minutes, but I want to be considerate of your time and hear from all of you tonight. Please, if you have any questions, the committee members will be staying afterwards if you'd like to discuss anything, or if you think about, if you think of something after the meeting, just contact one of us and we will get back with you. Now I will turn it over to Mr. Paul Barton. this evening. I want to discuss a little bit about the format of this meeting. I think uh, this meeting is a little bit different than the meetings that we've had in the past. It fulfills a requirement for the land and water conservation grant. That's the reason for the sign-in, that's the reason for the advertising that we've done, the bailouts that we've done, the legal notice in the newspaper, uh, and, and all the different things that you've heard about the meeting. So that, this is why we're doing that. One day notice. I don't think that was a fair deal for the night. Thank you for your input. Um, there will be, this meeting is divided up into three sections. And everyone will have three minutes to discuss at each section for a total of nine minutes. So the first section will be, what do you want the pool to look like? And, and this is what the input that we're looking from the, the citizens is, does it have, do you want it to have slides? Do you want it to have a, additional shade areas? Do you want kiddie pools? You know, what are the amenities that you want? Uh, concession stand, food trucks. This is, this is the time for input for that. The second section will be on uh, what, how do you want to use the pool? And the use of the pool comes down to, do you want water aerobics? 
I think everyone wants swimming lessons for the children in the community. So that, that would be an aspect for that also. And then we also, you know, there could be other things such as, such as uh, night swims, movie nights at the pool, things of that nature. We want to hear how does, do the citizens of Alva wish to utilize this facility. So the third aspect will be how do we want to pay for it. You know, there are several different methods that we're, we're approaching. There's private donation. There's the grants that we're looking at. And then there's, there's funding that the citizens supply through the city of Alva. And that could be sales tax, that could be an increase in fees, that could be a property tax, but th this is what we're wanting to hear from you. What are your recommendations to us? So that, that's what this meeting is about and how it's going to be formatted. We, we have a moderator with us this evening. It's Mr. Jeff McCowan. Jeff is an Alva High School graduate. He also is a graduate of Northwestern Oklahoma State University. He has worked, he's done work on his doctorate at Oklahoma State University. He's currently an instructor at Northwestern for both sociology and criminal justice. He is an administrator at BJCC for their, their drug program. And he also is known about the region for some of the local bands that he participated in. He doesn't know this, but when, when I was in grade school, he lived on my paper route. And so that's how long he's been involved with Alamo. But Jeff will be the moderator. He will be taking your questions or your comments for each section. And if those need to be repeated, we don't have a wireless mic this evening. If you don't wish to come down to the mic, he will repeat if, if, if we're having difficulty with hearing what people's comments are. He will repeat those through the microphone. So at this point in time, I'd like to turn it over to, to Jeff to receive comments and, and once again the first section will be comments from from you all about how do you want the pool to look what do you want it to look like thank you all right we will get started guys so whoever would like to uh, make a comment on this first yes sir my name's charles dabs i've lived here for 26 years number one this is a backstabbing back door lies a bunch of crooks and a bunch of thieves coming up with this. That's my opinion on it. Y'all can go from there. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your input. Excuse me. <clears throat> Who would like to be next? Surely we have some Excuse input me. on uh, what you would like this facility to look like. Yes, sir. As near it to the old look as it was. I've been here 76 years all my life. I enjoyed the pool all my childhood into adult. Um, it's something that our children need other than running around town. Okay. But it needs to look as near as it can to the old one. So the appearance to look as close as we can get to how it used to look. Okay. Anybody else have questions? So my name is Erin Davis, and I have lived in Alva since about 2012, and I have a daughter who's almost two years old, and I definitely love the idea of preserving the historic elements of this facility, but I would also like to see some more updates to include some more newer attractions for the Aquatic Center. Um, I know whenever, so the whole time we haven't had a pool, the only way to really cool off is to go to other communities. And so one of the ones that I can think of that we've gone to several times is Woodward. And I don't know if you guys have been to Crystal Beach, that facility in Woodward. I'm not saying that we need something like that, but something that has a lot of variety, especially for children who are the main, those are the kids that are going to be spending the most time at this facility. So not just one slide, maybe a couple, maybe looking at some type of obstacle course or some things, um, toys that are kind of, they're grounded into the pool, come up and allow for the kids to jump on. Just a different, some variety within the pool instead of it just being such an open area. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Jeff, could someone from the committee maybe explain to the group the difference between a swimming pool and an aquatic center? 
Okay, the difference between the swimming pool and the aquatic center. Do we want to tackle that now or after? If we could um, mainly have this meeting input from you all. I think that's a great question and it's something that we should answer, but if we could stick to input from you, that's what this meeting is about. We can talk about it afterwards if you'd like. Okay, that's you fine. It's just that that's the title, so. You don't have a definition of the difference? And you're calling this an aquatic center. What is, what is, what is the difference? I mean, what more does an aquatic center include over a swimming pool? I think that's what this meeting is supposed to be about, is for public input with regards to how you, as the public that will utilize this facility, how you want it to look like. Uh, as was just stated, you know, areas for kids, things of that nature. So an aquatic center would, you know, probably go a little bit beyond a swimming pool. But again, that's what we are here for, is to get from you as citizens of Alva, how do you want this to look? That's the goal here. Yes, ma'am. Sinead Felton, I have lived in Alva my entire life. I grew up at the Alva pool, and I also grew up at the Hartman pool. And I know that several years back we had talked about maybe having it more of a like a water park area. And I'm I'm more like you. It needs to stay as close because kids aren't learning how to swim. And if we have it where they can't swim, then I'm not really sure where they're gonna learn that life skill. So I like the idea of it still being open where you know the smaller kids have the shallow area to play. And the bigger kids have the deeper area where they can jump and, you know, dive and do all that other stuff. So I am I like the idea of some toys, like she said, but I'd like to keep it as close to as how it was. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Would it help us in getting a historical grant to keep the facade looking like it did before? That's so... Well, that's, that's something I think that as... We finalize, I think, the plans as the committee does on what, from input from all of you guys, how this pool is supposed to look. Then there'd be better ideas of what grants could be applied for and in what ways they could be used. I have a question as well. Well, I know. Go ahead, Alan. Go ahead. Go ahead. I think the question is well put. If, it, if there is an advantage in maintaining architecture, or something that resembles the past, and I don't say one way or the other, is it or not, but if there is, that would be something that should be looked into, if there's anything to be gained by retaining a historic. Well, I think uh, Mr. George stated that part of the goals that the committee has is for them to, as much as possible, retain what is there in terms of the entry building, and the shower area, and then, of course, the gazebo area outside. Uh, beyond that, from what the presentation looked like, uh, it didn't look like much else of the pool is going to be salvageable from that aspect. So I think we have to acknowledge that, but we can keep some of the historic preservation in terms of the gazebo and the building. If you don't, you can't get a historic grant. People that remodel homes in Alva that are historic homes, they have specific historic guidelines. They have to use certain lumber, certain... That's the same way I would think if you're trying to get a historic loan for the pool, it's going to be the same restrictions you can only do. Yeah, I'll turn this to Dr. Decker on that because she is grant writer on this. So. One of the things that I think um, was expressed early on when we did the surveys and the listening sessions back in 2019 and 20, it, it is very evident that the community is interested in maintaining the overall historic feel and as much of the historic architecture that we can. And we appreciate hearing that information from you all and do know that part of our process is to uh, make sure that we have qualified professionals involved in the in the engineering and the architecture that can address those things. So we appreciate you all expressing this, but um, know that we are 
every bit aware of, of the need for that. That was, you know, suggested early on. And um, so we are paying attention to the historic preservation. And, and yes, the guidelines are pretty strict. So thank you. <clears throat> Other comments on uh, how you would like this to look? What kind of guidelines or limitations are there involved in the high diving uh, platform that they, I guess, did away with, but I grew up with. So uh, now we made it. Yeah. Uh, Alan, is that something you'd like to see in the pool? Oh, well. <laughs> I want to go play on the tower. Yeah, I like I'm really just about the tower. What the rules are now, being honest about that. But that's something I enjoy to your own I think they would probably have to follow guidelines sure. as far as what insurance and liability would be there, because those things have changed dramatically. Howard sure. Jordan, I've lived here a long time. Um, I I would like to see this combination, but also a, a section where that could be open when the rest of the pool wasn't, so like a splash pad, or where like in the in the morning if we're hot, the kids could go play, or in the evening when, it, when the pool's closed, kids can still access that. Okay. I realize that I am a member of the community, but can I please speak as a member of our community? And what I would like it to look like, just so. Allison Co. I am from Alva. I grew up here. I was, I lived closer to the country club pool, so I didn't go to the city pool as much. However, I had a lot of friends that went there, and I was extremely jealous that they got to go there all the time. Um, as a community member, I would like to see us build for expansion. The, the needs of our community are cha have changed some, and they're going to continue to grow more and more. And our swimming pool is has the capabilities of being much more than just a swimming pool. And I think that's where Aquatic Center the, um, comes in. I think that a swimming pool can only generate dollars during the summer um, when it's open. But I, I think an aquatic center would be able to generate dollars year-round, and I think that that would be a good thing for our community as a community member. Um, I would support something like that. You know, pe people can learn to swim in the winter if there might be a, a small indoor component. But, of course, I realize that costs more money. But these are all things that I would like to see added in to add more programs, whether it be uh, sports training, for our high school and our college to be able to come down there and do rehabilitation services on you know injury um, prevention and things like that. They can train year-round in something like that more than just a swimming pool. So that's why I think Aquatic Center would be a better fit for our community because I think it would serve more of our community's needs and also open us up to more types of funding um, available. So, I think that's all I have to say off the top of my head, but I just feel like we should build for expansion, not build for what we need today. Because if we want it to last another 80 years, we have to think 80 years down the road. So, you're the one that needs to describe an aquatic center and a pool then, right? My, per my personal description mm -hmm. of that would be a swimming pool would be a a basin with water in it and that's all there is available to do is swim in it. An aquatic center would have like a splash pad, maybe a lazy river, some more things like the, um, the Woodward facility. There are some things there that would classify that as an aquatic center. Is it open year round? It's not and I think that they would benefit more. You'd have to enclose it and put heating and cooling in it, wouldn't you? Not all facets of an aquatic center have to be open year-round. I'm just saying if there was a small component that could be open, and the college is not available, hmm? the college is not available. I'd like to not like to, to say we we'll be staying afterwards for questions, and I'll stay here all night if you'd like to. But if we could please keep it to the 
input section, that's mainly what this is for. I, I'm just speaking as a community member. I would like to see that. That doesn't mean that those are things that the I, committee yeah, are I wasn't, planning. I, I so. wasn't insinuating that. <laughs> that's just what I think. <clears throat> Any other input on how you would like this to look? I like the zero entry that it's had before. Um, other facilities also have that. We need to keep that, that way people don't have to take those steps in. That's very dangerous. So just keeping that zero entry. Okay. That was originally a health purpose. <gasps> Disinfect your feet before you went into the public pool. Mm -hmm. okay. It used to be treated water. Okay. Oh, yeah. Any other input on this question before we move to the next one? Yes. Jeff, um, Kathy Ernest again. I think I'd like to suggest maybe more shaded areas besides just the pavilion. I think that's needed um, mm -hmm. when kids get out of the facility and need to rest for a minute or take a little snack break. I think more shaded areas would be helpful. And if parents or grandmothers need to take their kids to the pool, they would appreciate a shaded area also. <laughs> I agree with that. <laughs> okay. Very good. There it is. Any other input on this question? Okay, then we will move to the next question, which again is, how would you like to use it? So if we're looking at uh, an aquatic center, how would you like that to be used? And it goes hand in hand with how you'd like it to look, because what you have to look at will be utilized. So how do you want it to be used? I think someone already mentioned it, but also making sure that obviously the swimming lessons are a big part of that. Um, birthday parties being able to be rented out for, for events. Um, the um, water aerobics, that would be a really great one. Um, the movie nights that someone suggested, that would be really fun. Just, especially once it opens, it's going to be such a relief to the community that, I mean, we need to be using it as much as we possibly can. Okay. Yes, sir? Are there any uh, rules that should be applied when designing the depths of the pool or the width, whatever, for uh, racing competitions in the pool, like between different teams and stuff like be it between towns or, or groups in town or something like that? Mm -hmm. That I'm not aware of. That you mean like swim teams? I'm sure the committee yeah, is looking just for that petition. Like that's a use. Yeah. I mean, that's okay. Yeah, that's the input we're looking for. I mean, yeah. if, if that's it, a use you know, that we could if, build if into the pool. That's something that the public would like. Uh, I know that there are a lot of pools in southern Kansas that have swimming competitions, so that could be something the committee could look into to see what, you know, how that would impact, uh, you know, preserving and getting grant funding and all of that. Well, I'm a native elf. When I was growing up, we used to have competitions between Cub Scout groups and stuff like that in different towns here and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, be designed and so forth. Even if there's markings on the floor, maintaining it. I mean, maybe not the floor, but I guess it'd be more like ropes on the surface. Maintaining mm -hmm. lanes. Mm -hmm. Stuff right. like that for competition purposes. Jeff, okay. our, our daughter, um, I'm Melinda Barton, and um, our daughter was... Um, for two or three summers, she participated in that swim team competition that they have in southern in the southern Kansas. It's like Kiowa, Anthony, Harper. Mm -hmm. um, there's six or seven different towns that have little swim teams, and they have um, like every a couple times a week they'll have a little swim meet. And if there are tons of kids in southern Kansas who do that, and we took her to Kiowa so she could be on that team. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it was a really great experience for her. And so um, I would love to see that personally because I think that's something that our kids are missing out on. I think, mm -hmm. I think learning how to swim is really, really important mm -hmm. for kids. I mean, I was a lifeguard when I was in college. Um, I know what happens to kids when they get in, in a position where they're not prepared for it. And I mean, you know, that's really scary. And I, I hope that we don't ever send any kids out into the world from Alba who haven't had the chance to learn how to swim. And that the swim teams are really important. So. Yeah, it could be a potential revenue generator as well. Yeah, uh, they pay an entry fee and yeah, mm -hmm. so. Good suggestions. What other suggestions for the use of it? 
Thank you. Beyond swimming pool. And thank you. Backing off of the swim competition, um, Fairview, um, Oklahoma, they do a summertime triathlon that community members can do. It's a big hit um, that involves the pool. And then they also do. Um, it's really really fun. It's the um, duct tape boat. Um, competi the competition, I don't know if you've seen that, but you kids get together, they work really hard on, and they make these boats out of cardboard and duct tape, and they have to get down to, it's so funny, but that would be a really fun <laughs> thing fun. to do as well. Okay, that's a neat suggestion. What other ideas for the use of this do you all have? Kathy yes. again. <laughs> um, years ago, we had a phys ed instructor in the public school who, after the pool closed in the summer, do some of you remember this, um, would teach kids how to canoe, kayak, you know, some, some paddling sports. Um, and that was a fall event. So it would be good to try to coordinate some programming, maybe with the school district, um, for some events like that, some programming like that. Okay. Good suggestions. Anybody think of any other ideas? All good ideas so far. Okay, should we move to the third question? The, probably the most fun one. How do you want the city to pay for this? I suggest all the means possible through grants, through whatever, whether it's taxation through us, new penny and a half, whatever. I'm for the kids. If I gotta pay a little more for my property tax or whatever, they need it. I retired from Bill Johnson's. Those kids from Bill Johnson's never had what we're trying to do for ours. Very true. Surely there's some input on how you'd like it to be paid for. Yes, sir. Is uh, this committee an independent committee? Independent of the city? And the reason I'm saying that is because somebody brought up to me today that, like, that uh, 501c donation that's made to the city is not tax deductible. It's not a tax donation. Well, I'm not on the committee, so... I can't speak for that. Blake would probably actually, be able to... You actually have your 501c IRS uh, certificate? If you'd like, we can answer that after the meeting. Right. I'd be we, happy to talk to you yeah. about it. We don't all need to hear it? Can you no, anyone can, when, when this meeting's done, we'll, we'll open it up for questions. Is there some reason we can't... I like to ask questions. Is there some reason we can't address that in the group? Well, we can address it in the group for everyone that stays. This meeting's function is to, to provide a, a, a fulfill a requirement for the Land and Water Conservation Grant. In order for us to get federal funding, we have to have a public input meeting, and that's the structure for this meeting. We're also so, trying to just stick to the agenda. It's not the agenda, it's just for public input, and uh, uh, so, so I'll we'll answer that. We'll be very happy to answer questions when we just get through that portion of it. Okay, so now, again, how do we want to pay for this? We've got uh, the idea of extra property tax, maybe a little extra tax on, on other ways. Grants, I know, are going to be applied for. They are going to try to stick to the historical preservation of the facility that we've already got there, but it's going to have to change, obviously. There's a void or voids under the pool, and things will have to happen. So the big question for all of us, since we are all citizens, is how do you want this to be paid for? How, how do we accept that challenge and make it work? I think private funding is available in some communities. Um, also, Naming opportunities, or else again, if we know anybody that would be 
interested in naming a certain area after them and their family, if there's a family that has ties to the Hatfield Park pool, or you know, something that would like to be a part of preserving the historic preservation of that. I don't know if I think that we can all come together however we can to do it. I know that there's been some private funding happening in the nursing home and the <coughs> lemonade stand at the car show. So I think that the community is already on board and it's very exciting to see everyone excited. Yes, um, I'm just going to ask something that I know, I mean, I know that it looks like I am, I'm very young, very inexperienced with this, um, but I just wanted to throw out, I mean, and maybe this is just a little Girl Scout me, but I mean, our fundraisers, you know, a community event where it's at Hatfield Park, I don't know, getting kids and cops involved, getting other organizations together to have a, some sort of a community event to a one day or two day weekend event to raise money specifically for the pool. Um, I would just say the community is, they're very excited, yes, but they're also at a point where how much longer can this possibly go where we don't have a pool? And so we have so many people in the community who want to give money and they want to do all these things. And so if you have an event that's not only to give money, but also to boost morale and to bring everyone together instead of the politics of this or that, but just to have one, one event where all of the money is going towards that one purpose, I don't know, that's just an idea. That's a good idea. <clears throat> that's what we're looking for, different ways, and then uh, have to pass it through all of the different elements that have to go within this and fund something of this magnitude and see what can work. Good idea, good input. Are Anyone else on this? Your suggestion a while ago of naming rights? Because of an objection to it being commercial naming rights? Like Coca-Cola, Aquatic Center, and only Coke products can be served there or whatever? I mean, that's the way most of these big things are financed. It's the company. Corporate. I don't know how that would impact, you know, rents and all of that. That would be something the committee, I'm sure, would have to look into to see what it is legal as far as, because I know that the committee, uh, from what they expressed to me when they asked me to moderate, they're working more towards getting as much grant funding as is possible to make what we as citizens of the community have to come up with. Uh, the idea that Aaron posed, I think, is a good idea, you know, and I like the idea of morale boost personally as a, as a citizen, uh, because I, I understand the frustration, you know, year after year not seeing the pool open. But it is a, it is a process, and that's what we're trying to get done tonight as part of that process. Can, yes. I'm Desiree, and I've lived here for a long time, been in Cherokee all my life, but Along with her thing, like when you have something like that, can we not have a booth set up for something like this to ask people what they want, to ask what they could think they could, you know, for the kids to do and set up like a little questionnaire's place. Maybe someone from the council could sit there and answer questions because, you know, a lot of the city people, they're not here and they didn't get to ask their questions. So maybe it's something like that. You could have something on the side for people to have a way to use their voice. It's just a thought. Good thoughts, thank you. Yes. Some other ideas, um, also some social media marketing, some yeah. um, campaigns for the pool. You know, once you get to the point where you have a, a design, a mock up, putting that out and sponsoring and targeting it certain areas and having that link to have a place where people can donate online, as well as doing some, so, some targeted marketing with mailers. Um, I will say personally, I thought that the the content of the mailer I received was very black and white, very strict, and I understand that that's kind of the purpose of this meeting. But also, you have to understand that there are several citizens in this community who are frustrated, and so just kind of giving, you need to kind of mend that a little bit, in my opinion. And so, with you do a, if you do a targeted mailing, you need to think about the message and pulling at the heartstrings in different ways. 
And so that may be something that um, different people can help with that. But I would say a targeted mailer for sure um, to reach a certain um, demographic. And I know that both of you know what I'm talking about, as well as that social media campaign will hit a different demographic. Good input. Thank you. Any other input on this in terms of trying to come up with ways to fund? I wasn't going to say anything, but I'm going, <laughs> I'm going to. I um, feel like if grants are a good thing, um, donations, you know, everything that everyone has talked about. When it comes to the taxes part of it, there are a lot of people out there who, if it's just the property owners happen to pay the taxes, that's in a way, I'm going to use this phrase, and it maybe isn't really the right words. It isn't really fair because just property owners aren't the only ones going to use that pool. If you're going to do a tax increase, it needs to be some way that, whether it be sales tax, which we all don't like because we've got the highest in the country as it is, but it needs to be something where everybody is helping pay for that and not just people who own property. Just my opinion, and I'm, I'm like it's just my opinion. All good input. Nothing to do with anything else. Just me. What's going on is the purpose of this meeting is for public input. So again, appreciate that because I'm sure you're not alone in that field. Yes, sir. you brought up sales tax. Is it possible to put this pool in the outer recreational? I mean, put it under the Alba Rec Park. Because they've got a sales tax coming to them. Okay, good, good input. That would be something the committee could look into or look at the answer from. Yes, sir. Well, well, since Tom brought that up, Adam Jordan, I, I um, my thought is, why can't we put all the parks and recs back into um, the, the uh, rec park? Make it all that one. And uh, I know a few years back we uh, kind of gutted the authority of the rec park board, put that back as an independent board, and then we would need to increase the sales tax, but that would help all of our parks, which would help. But anyway, I think that, that would be a good thing. Okay. Increase the sales tax. Good input. And that would address what was also brought up on taxation of just property. Any other ideas? Input on that? Another one would be a radio campaign. If you've got a radio station, you have a campaign on the radio. Okay. Good input. Use all of the forms of media that you can. Yeah. Good input. Any other ideas on this? Then I suppose we could open it up for the questions. Any other input on how you would like to pay for this? I'm going to go fund me from I think grants would go bye bye then. <laughs> okay, so I have a question. Um, I got this in the mail yesterday. Also, we had the newsgram yesterday, and there's the full page ad in there on the bank it thing. Could this not qualify for something that they could do with the bank it? Um, mm -hmm. Okay, just. <laughs> Okay. That was an affirmative nod there. Any other input before I guess I allow questions? Okay. So now I guess we need a lot of committee members to answer questions. Move to item number five on the agenda. The closing remarks. Thank you all for coming. I wasn't sure how many were going to show up, so I'm glad to see so many faces. And I really, I truly am, am um, happy with your input. Uh, loved hearing all these different ideas, things to explore. And it, it did kill me to not answer questions, but again, please meet with us afterwards. We hope that once the engineering firms are hired after the RFP process, that we'll have more sessions concerning the actual cost and design of the pool, so that will come after we have a firm hired and we'll have more Q&A sessions. 
actual Q and A sessions. All the information you have given us tonight has been recorded and will be very useful for when that process was started. Thank you to Northwest Tech for letting us use their seminar room for setting us up. And a special thank you to Jeff for moderating today. We greatly appreciate it. With that, I would like to entertain a motion from the committee. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Thank you, and have a good night.